Imagine a land of staggering wealth where rivers of black gold flow beneath the sands, fueling one of the richest economies on earth. This is Saudi Arabia, a kingdom celebrated for its oil reserves, yet paradoxically almost barren when it comes to the basics of life. For most of the year, deserts stretch endlessly, shimmering under an unforgiving sun. Rocky terrain dominates the landscape, and in the scorching summers, temperatures can soar above 50 degrees Celsius, hot enough to fry an egg on the ground. Rainfall is scarce, often less than 200 millimeters per year. There are no rivers that flow year-round, no lush valleys fed by melting snow, no lakes to rely on. It is, by all natural accounts, an inhospitable place for agriculture. And yet Saudi Arabia faces a question as urgent as it is daunting. How can a nation starved of water and arable land attempt an agricultural revolution? How can it feed its people when the very land seems to resist cultivation at every turn? Welcome to my channel Truth and Hope. Here you get truth always. Please subscribe for daily updates and join me as we uncover the hidden stories shaping our world. This is the tale of ambition, risk and ingenuity. A story of a desert kingdom daring to rewrite the rules of survival by turning its barren sands into fertile farmland. It's a vision that could redefine what is possible in some of the harshest environments known to man. Saudi Arabia's wealth is legendary. With confirmed oil reserves once estimated at over 268 billion barrels and some projections reaching even higher, its black gold has built sprawling cities, futuristic infrastructure, and a standard of living envied across the region. But beneath this prosperity lies a vulnerability that money alone cannot erase. Despite its oil riches, the kingdom imports the vast majority of its food. Its natural environment simply does not allow for easy farming. Water scarcity rules the land. Without rivers or dependable rains, cultivating crops is a constant uphill battle. The paradox is clear. A nation overflowing with energy, yet perpetually starved of water. For Saudi leaders, this dependence on imports has long been a strategic concern. In times of crisis, wars, or disrupted supply chains, relying on ships to bring food from distant lands leaves the kingdom exposed. As far back as the 1970s, Riyadh decided it could not afford to leave such a critical lifeline in foreign hands. If deserts stood in the way, then deserts would have to be conquered. The government rolled out programs of staggering ambition. Desert land was distributed free of charge. Farmers were given incentives few could refuse. Families could claim vast tracts if they could make them productive, and corporations could access even larger estates. Interest-free loans flowed, subsidies for equipment and fertilizers halved production costs, and pesticides were provided free of charge. It was a massive state-led push to transform the desert into a breadbasket. The results stunned the world. From a humble 40,000 tons of wheat in the early 1970s, production surged past 4 million tons by 1992. For a brief moment in history, Saudi Arabia, the land of sand and stone, stood as the sixth largest wheat producer on the planet. Images of green fields stretching across the desert were broadcast as proof that no obstacle was insurmountable when wealth and determination combined. But beneath the celebration, cracks were already forming. This agricultural miracle was built on ancient underground aquifers, fossil water reserves that had been untouched for thousands of years, some dating back to the last ice age. Unlike rivers or lakes, these aquifers would never replenish fast enough to sustain such massive extraction. Pumping them dry was like burning through a savings account with no income. By the early 2000s, the writing was on the wall. Groundwater levels plummeted. Wells grew deeper and more expensive. And by 2016, the once proud wheat fields had withered. The dream of feeding the nation through traditional farming had collapsed. Saudi Arabia was forced to return to its reliance on imports, a return that stung national pride. The experiment revealed a harsh truth. Without new technologies, no amount of money could overcome the kingdom's natural limitations. The stage was set for a new kind of solution, one that would come not from brute force, but from innovation and partnerships across borders. Enter China, a country with its own history of taming deserts and hostile climates. From Xinjiang's arid expanses to the salt-crusted deserts near Dubai, Chinese scientists had faced challenges as severe as Saudi Arabia's and they had achieved what once seemed impossible. One of their breakthrough innovations was the sand converter, 
a polymer substance capable of binding loose sand and increasing water retention sixfold. What was once lifeless desert floor could suddenly hold enough moisture to support crops. Combined with underground drip irrigation, which delivers water straight to plant roots while cutting evaporation losses from 90% down to just 5%, entire farming systems became possible in places where rainfall was almost non-existent. AI-powered monitoring systems added another layer of control. Satellites tracked crop health, soil sensors measured moisture, and algorithms predicted pest threats days before they arrived. In Xinjiang, these methods transformed barren landscapes into farmland where rice, wheat, soybeans, and cotton thrived. Vegetation coverage rose from zero to 80%. Soil fertility tripled, and the once relentless desert winds lost their strength as greenery anchored the soil. Saudi leaders took notice. If China could achieve such results in regions with even less rainfall and harsher conditions, why not in the kingdom? The dream of food independence found new hope. In May 2025, that hope became concrete. At the China-Saudi Arabia Agricultural Development Forum, both nations signed a landmark agreement worth over $4 billion. Covering more than 70 fields of collaboration, the partnership promised not just experimental pilot projects, but a comprehensive strategy from soil treatment and crop cultivation to processing, packaging, and distribution. It was, by all accounts, one of the most ambitious agricultural collaborations in history. For Saudi Arabia, this wasn't about growing wheat alone. It was about rethinking agriculture itself. Desalination plants would turn seawater into fresh irrigation sources. Underground irrigation systems would waste almost nothing. AI-driven tractors and autonomous seeders would cover vast areas with precision. Even storage and distribution networks would be modernized to cut down on losses. Consider the Rabig desalination project. Designed to produce 600,000 cubic meters of fresh water daily, enough for over 2 million homes, it relies on reverse osmosis technology that consumes far less energy than global averages. By coupling this with renewable energy initiatives, Saudi Arabia is building not just farming capacity, but a sustainable system designed for the future. Every drop counts. And when those drops are funneled through underground pipes monitored by sensors and applied with surgical precision, crops flourish even under 50 degree heat. The desert begins to change. Of course, Saudi Arabia faces challenges unique to its geography. Its sands are coarser, saltier, and more hostile than those in Xinjiang. Its summers are hotter, its rainfall even scarcer, and its arable land scattered across millions of square kilometers. Scaling up technology across this vast landscape will require not just expertise, but persistence and adaptation. Yet if successful, the payoff is immense. A model for desert nations across Africa, the Middle East, and beyond. Examples from abroad already prove it can be done. In Dubai, Chinese teams successfully grew rice in saline desert soils, achieving yields above global averages. In Xinjiang, rice and wheat once thought impossible now grow steadily. These aren't isolated miracles, but repeatable systems. And Saudi Arabia is betting billions that they can be scaled up into something transformative. If this agricultural revolution succeeds, it will mean more than food security. It will mean a shift in global power. Nations that control not only energy, but also the ability to produce food in deserts will hold a blueprint for survival in an era of climate change. As droughts intensify worldwide, Saudi Arabia's experiment may become humanity's roadmap for the future. And so the story continues. A kingdom born of oil now seeks to conquer its greatest vulnerability with science and ambition. From barren sand to potential breadbasket, Saudi Arabia's agricultural revolution is a gamble that could reshape not only the kingdom, but the world's understanding of what is possible in the harshest of lands. The question remains, will the desert yield to human ingenuity or will it remind us once again of nature's limits? The answer is still being written, one field, one drop of water and one grain of wheat at a time. If you've been inspired by this story, there's more to come. Subscribe to and turn on notifications so you don't miss updates on this groundbreaking project. The Saudi agricultural revolution is just beginning and you'll want to witness how it unfolds. Together, we'll explore how technology is rewriting the future one desert at a time.